All right, welcome to the first Intro to Android with Java tutorial. I'm Ethan from the University of Washington Mobile Development Club, and today we'll be learning about constraint layouts and building a color picker app. All right, so we will be using Android Studio, so if you don't have that, uh, please install it. Uh, it's pretty easy, you can just, you know, search it up and install it right here. Uh, so once you have that installed, uh, open up Android Studio and you'll get a screen like this. Uh, for now, we just want to create a new project. And here you can see there's a lot of different uh, starter apps kind of that you can pick from. Uh, right now, we'll just go with no activity. And today we'll be creating a color picker. So you can title the app that. And the package name. Don't worry about that right now. Uh, you can pick a save location, and you can also pick the language, uh, Kotlin or Java, which pretty similar. Today we'll be using Java. Here you can pick the uh, minimum SDK version that you want your app to run on. Uh, you can pick from basically any version of Android. Uh, newer, ver newer versions of Android, um, you'll be able to run on less devices, right? Like if we pick the newest version, We'll only be able to run on not very many devices. So I, I personally, I usually pick uh, API 19. It's pretty, it's pretty solid choice. And if this is checked, make sure you uncheck it. All right, click finish. And this pops up, just hit yes. All right, once this finishes loading, uh, make sure up here that if you're on project, you know, this might look kind of terrible. So make sure you change to Android and that will uh, make the project structure look a lot nicer. So kind of an intro to the project structure. Uh, we have a couple different folders. Gradle scripts, that's just um, uh, configuration. Uh, if you're gonna use uh, some libraries, that's where you'll implement them. Manifests, this is basically information about your app, what screens you'll have, how they are related to each other. Um, here in the Java folder, you can see we have three different folders. These are for tests. So here, this folder, we don't have anything in it yet, right? But this is where we'll write all our code. And in here, in the resources, this is where we'll have things like uh, images, uh, uh, text, you know, strings, uh, themes. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So we want to create a new activity. So you can think of an activity as basically like a screen on your app. So. You know, if you have multiple screens, you'll probably have multiple activities. For now, we're just going to go with, uh, we're just going to make an app that has one activity. And, you know, you can see there's a lot of different templ templates. Uh, for now, we'll just go with an empty activity. Uh, so click Next. You can name your activity. I'll just keep it as main activity for now. Um, and make sure this is clicked. So make sure you generate a layout fire file. Um, here you can name the layout file. I think it's good just to keep it uh, how it has it. Um, and that's all good. So we will click finish. Ah. So we have our first activity. So you can see now there's a class called main activity here. And if you go to the resources layout, you'll see there's also a corresponding layout file. So the layout file will basically be how things are laid out on your screen. You know, where the but where buttons are, where text fields are, stuff like that. Um, and this uh, main activity Java class will be all the basically all the functions you want your, your activity to carry out. So I already said we're going to be creating a color picker today. So let's start by uh, adding some views here. 
So if you click on, double click on activity main and then up here, click split. So this is basically the text, you know, it's the code, it's in XML. Uh, and over here you can see basically a preview of what our screen will look like right now. Nothing because we haven't added anything yet. So let's add a text view. Which basically displays text. So as we type here, you can see it comes up with uh, suggestions and you can just hit tab um, to select that. All right, so we have a text view. Um, you can see there's an error right now. Uh, I'll go over that later. Uh, but basically we need to specify a width and a height for this. Um, so you can specify things like 10 pixels, right? If you wanted to, that's pretty bad though, right? Because text size, text sizes change, you know, on different phones and pixel sizes are, you know, are even different densities. Um, so there's something else called a uh, density independent pixel DP um, that you can use. Um, basically it'll be the same size on any phone, no matter, you know, what, uh, what density the pixels are. Um, you know, but that still doesn't really account for different, you know, text sizes or text fonts, right? So we're actually going to use a special uh, attribute called wrap content. So basically, whatever text we need to display, the width of this text view will be just big enough to display the text. All right. And the height, we will do the same thing. It's also important that all your views have IDs so you can reference them from your Java code when you want to add, you know, interactivity and stuff. So type Android colon ID tab and we will add an ID. Let's just call it uh, text view, text view red because this will be a we'll be adding text that will say red. So basically what we have now is uh, a text view with an ID of text view red um, that has width and height, uh, whatever, however as big as the text is. So now let's add some text to it. So we'll specify the text property and let's say red for now. All right, so you'll get this, uh, if you do that, you'll get this, uh, it'll highlight it, and it says, you know, hard-coded string, you should use a string resource. So in general, on Android, you don't want to ever just type in your strings, you know, hard-code them, um, because, you know, what if you want your app to be, you know, in a different language, right? I'm going to go through and hard-code everything again? No. So uh, Android actually has a very... Uh, very nice feature that'll allow you to get around this. So um, if you go to the resource resources values strings here, we can define strings. Uh, I'll call this one red and the text will be red. So in the future, if we wanted to add, you know, different languages, we could uh, add a new strings.xml file for a different language and just basically redefine all these in a different language so that um, and the the app, when you run the app it'll automatically pick you know whatever language so don't get in the habit of hard coding your strings it's really better to uh, define string resources like this so now uh, back in our layout file we can just say at string red. And now you can see, if we zoom in here, our text views display uh, displays the text red. We have another problem though. You know, if you hover over this, it says this view is not constrained. 
Um, so we're actually the parent. The parent view is this constraint layout. So how a constraint layout works is so the constraint layout is the parent view, right? Which is basically you know this big thing on the outside, and it'll hold uh, child views, right? Like A, B, and C here. So how a constraint layout works is we can do things like say, oh, okay, we want the top of this view B to be aligned with the top of the of this view A, right? Which is that's shown by this arrow, right? And then when you actually run the app, the A and B will be aligned together on the top. We can also say, okay, let's align, let's attach view A to the left side of the screen and the top of the screen, right? So when we run the app, it'll be in the upper left. So let's try to constrain our red text view to the, the top and the left. So we're going to say app uh, layout constraint top to now this is important um, <clears throat> we actually want top to the top of right because we're trying to align the top of this text view to the top of the parent right and the, the parents basically the whole screen and so we'll say align the top to the top of parent <clears throat> and we will similarly say um, so when you see start here, you know, notice I, I don't use left, right? I use start. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> well, basically, the thing is that some languages will read right to left. So in that case, your, your whole screen will actually be flipped. Um, but you can basically just think of start as being always basically left. So what we're doing is we're basically, because right, English is left to right. So we'll be constraining the left of our view to the left of the parent. All right, and now we don't have any errors, right? And our view is <clears throat> constrained to the left and the top. All right, so this is, you know, this is a pretty simple app. Let's let's run it. So if you go up here and click here and AVD manager, we'll be running this on a virtual device. Um, so create virtual device if you don't already have one. Um, and we'll just go with the Pixel 4. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. Uh, here you can choose which version of Android you want. Uh, you click download if you don't have it yet. I'll we'll just I'll just go with R. And here you can just change some configuration. We'll hit, we'll just hit finish for now. All right, and now just click this run button. And you can close this. All right, so once the emulator starts up, uh, you can run the app by pressing that button. Um, you know, but we'll get an error. It'll say, could not identify launch activity. So basically, we need to specify, you know, even though we only have one activity, you know, we need to specify which activity we want the app to basically uh, default to when we start up. So here we'll have to go to the manifest. So you see here, we something's been created for our activity main activity. So we will add something called an intent filter. Basically, we will just say this is basically the, the main activity um, that we want to start up onto. And we will also specify a category. Um, 
launcher. All right. So now our app should run. Sweet. Here we go. And we can see that we have that uh, text view red. All right. So let's make a couple of changes. First of all, let's uh, let's change the text color. Um, and again, we're going to want to use uh, going to want to use uh, resources again. So don't uh, you know? You could just type in you know like the hex codes. You know, there's a color. But instead, we're going to use the uh, resources again. So you see, if you go to resources, values, colors, you can see there's some default colors generated. Um, we'll just use black for now. So that color black. And right, the, the, another reason these resources are nice is because if you have some, you know, funky color, you don't have to, you know, type in the, you know, specific value everywhere. You can just, you know, reference that color. All right. Uh, let's also set the text size. So let's just say, um, let's just say 16 dp for now. And you know you might get this error. It says use sp instead of dp for your text sizes. So basically, the difference between uh, sp and dp is that sp is essentially the same, except when the user on their, you know, on their Android device, changes the text size, the SP will also get bigger. So if we if we use DP, the user, you know, increase the text size because they wanted it bigger. Maybe that's easier to read. This wouldn't get bigger. So that's why we use SP in order to allow that to scale with the user's preferences. All right, and we will also, you know, this this looks kind of bad since it's right up against the ed edge of the screen. So we'll add some margins. So layout, margin, start. Um, let's just do something like 16 dp. And we'll simply do a margin for the top. And now you can see here that uh, our view is, you know, there's some padding basically between the side of the screen. Uh, and the top. All right, so we've got one text view. Let's add some more for, right, what we'll need to have a red, green, and blue component of our color. So copy those, change this to green. Uh, we'll need some new string resources, right? So green, blue, All right, and back here we can change what string resource we're going to. All right, we'll also need to change, you know, if you look right now, all these views are just right on top of each other, which is not what we want. So we're going to need to change these layout constraints. So we're actually going to want to have the green below red, right? So you know, you might think of just changing this, okay, um, text view red. But, you know, what's going on there that it looks like they're overlapping. The thing is, we actually have to, we don't want, right now we're aligning text view green to the top of text view red with 16 dp of padding, right? We actually want to align it the top, uh, we want to align the top of text view green to the bottom of text view red. All right now we'll see there's you know nice padding. So we'll do the same with text view blue and we'll just align it to the bottom of green. And now we've got some nice spacing. So you know we can run this and We go we got some nice text on the screen all right so now we want to add some sliders 
right? So we can actually adjust the red, green, and blue components uh, of each uh, of each color. So we're going to use something called a seek bar. So again, uh, let's so I'll come. There's some uh, some interesting things we can do with the width here to make it look nice. But for now, I'm just gonna. You should never actually do this, but I'm just gonna hard code 200 dp, and the height will be um, wrap content for now. <clears throat> right, and we don't forget to add the ID. Um, seek bar vet, and we will set the max. Basically, you know, the slider will go from zero all the way to this number. Um, and the way the way colors are packed into an integer, um, Eight bits happens to be, you know, two hundred fifty-six different numbers, so we'll go from zero to two fifty-five, because um, each color component is eight bits, and we will constrain the top to the top of parent, like we did with the text view red, <clears throat> and we will constrain start to the end of so basically we're constraining we're going to constrain uh the left of this of this seek bar to the right of text view red and let's add the same padding we had before um all right so you know that looks pretty nice let's also constrain it um to the end And we want to constrain the end of the seek bar to the end of parent. So basically the right to the right. And you, know, you can see it, uh, you can see it kind of centers, right? Um, but we're actually going to do something um, called chaining. So if we, if we you see this, if we constrain, we can constrain these views to each other, right? And then if we specify the special value, if we basically say, let's set the width of B to zero, that, that's a special value that actually means fill up all available space. So let's try that. All right, so first of all, let's set this width to zero. And we'll constrain this text view uh, end to the start of seek bar red. And we forgot to add a margin end. All right, so that looks pretty good, right? We've filled up all the available space. Um, but you might notice the bottom isn't quite aligned. So we're actually going to change up what we've constrained this top, uh, this top two. So let's actually constrain the top to the top of text view red. And we will similarly constrain the bottom to the bottom of text view red. And right, we don't we don't want that margin anymore. So now we'll basically center it um, vertically with this text view red. All right, so that's great. Um, let's duplicate this for the green and the blue components. Oops. All 
All right, and in order to make sure that uh, guarantee that chaining will uh, constrain this to basically we're constraining, you know, the seat bar and the you know the text views to each other, so we get that chaining, and we'll do that here as well. Okay, so let's run this. Cool. We've got an app that doesn't actually do very much, unfortunately. So let's add some, let's add, we're gonna add a view now that we can display, uh, display the output color on. Um, so, uh, this, this view doesn't have to be any spe anything special, it can just be, can just be a view. So I will just, um, hard code these values in, um, you know, you should probably, uh, if you, if you're on Windows, you Alt Enter, you can extract a dimension resource. And let's just call this uh, color view width, right? And now we've got, if you go to resource values, dimensions.xml, we, you know, it's, it's the same thing as strings except for dimensions, um, right? So we don't have to type that in there. All right, and we should, you know, we should also, um, we should also probably do that for. Uh, for these dimensions as well, right? Uh, I won't do that now, uh, just in the interest of time. Um, but note that that is something you can do and should do. So we need to add an ID as always. Um, let's call it uh, view color, All right? And we need to constrain it as well. So uh, let's do the top to the bottom of text view blue. We just want to, you know, have it right, right below there. And let's do start to the start of parent. And then we need to add the margins, right? Which are the same as that. All right, so this view will display the output color. So now let's actually make that happen. So now we're actually gonna to need to add um, some Java code. So you'll notice that this uh, main activity class already has a method called onCreate. So we're gonna, we're actually gonna use this, uh, use this method. So this method basically will run when your app when the specific activity that you're on starts up initially, um, which in our case, right, since our main activity is our launcher, since it's our launcher activity, uh, it'll base this method will basically run when the app starts up. All right. So we are going to need uh, a method to. initialize our views in the Java side of things. So, right, we're gonna need to, uh, we're gonna need to get uh, the value of these, of these seek bars, right? So we will say, create new variable, that's a seek bar, uh, seek bar red, and we'll set it equal to find view by ID, and an R dot ID dot, and this is where the, you know, the IDs are super important. It'll basically be whatever ID you named your seek bar red, which in this case is seek bar red. All right. So now we have a seek bar object that, um, 
corresponds to this, you know, I mean, it is this seek bar red. So we will do the same thing for green and blue. And we also need our, you know, our, our color view that we're going to output the color on. So I'm actually going to create a, a field for this in the main activity class because it turns out we won't actually need these views outside of this method, but we will need um, the view color, basically where we output our color. We will actually need that outside of this method. And assign view color equal to view by ID r dot id dot view color. All right. So now we are going to need to we're going to need some also some fields to store the red green and blue components of the current color that we've that we're at. Um, so I'll add, I'll add another method here um, that will just basically you know initialize these values. Uh, in a future tutorial we'll learn how to uh, basically save these values between you know you can close the app and open it back up and it'll be on the same value but for now let's just say, you know, give it some arbitrary values um, that our, you know, our app will be initialized to. All right. So for our seek bar red, we will first of all we'll set set progress basically this in, this initial red value because um, right we call we call initialize values. And then initial views. So these will be initialized before we get to this method, right? And now we're going to add a a listener. So set on seek bar change listener and new seek bar to on seek bar change listener. You can hit a tab and it'll populate a bunch of things for you. So basically, this. This listener, what does it do? Well, this first method will be called whenever the user, you know, starts puts down their finger to start changing things, and this this stop tracking touch will be called when they lift up their finger. We don't really care about those though. Only one we care about is this on progress uh, changed. So basically, whenever the user changes the progress bar, we will say red equals progress. All right, so we've basically set this, uh, this this field red to the new progress that we've gotten from the seek bar. <clears throat> and then after that, we're going to have to update the color on this on this view color, right? So I'll create a new method called update color. We will implement that later, but basically we'll, we'll set the new value of red and we'll just update the color. Um, so, right, we will do this for all three of the colors. So, seek bar green. And the seek bar blue. Okay. And... One thing we'll actually, one more thing we'll have to do is actually uh, update the color here as well because, right, when this, when the app is initialized, we'll want to update the color according to what these values are, right? Because if we didn't do this, the user would have to actually move this around to actually get the correct color to update, right? <clears throat> and we we want to start with the right color. 
All right, so this is the way a color is packed into an integer in uh, in Java. So we have the right this is hexadecimal. Uh, each one of these letters is uh, four bits, right? Which is you know 32 bits total, and we have basically eight bits of alpha, which is basically how transparent uh, your color is, and you know eight bits of red, then green, then blue. Um, so However, you know, our, our current values um, that we've got here, these are all just, right, like the, the red currently, the red field is just, it's like that, right, you know, with a bunch of zeros. So we're going to have to shift over some of the values. So create a variable for the red shift. And we're just going to shift it over 16 bits. Right, because that's that's how many bits to get from there all the way over to there. And, you know, this operator, if you haven't seen it, it's just a bit shift operator. Shift the bits over um, to the left. All right, and we'll need a green shift as well. Except for this will only be 8 bits, right? And then for the blue shift, we actually don't need to, you know, shift it over at all, right? Because the blue is already at the end. And then for the alpha shift, we want our color to be not transparent at all. So we'll use um, 0xff, which is the same as 255. Basically means, you know, full opaqueness. We don't want our color to be transparent at all. And we will shift that over 24. And then to get the final color, we're just going to combine these these values that have been shifted uh, with uh, a couple of bitwise war operators. So alpha shift, red shift, green shift, and blue shift. And that will that will turn the fields into the into a color of this form. And then all we do is view color dot set background color that color. All right, so now we can run the app. And awesome, so we, we got a color here. And we can, you know, play with the sliders and it works. All right, and that is the end of this tutorial. Um, so now you know how to build, uh, you know, build build an app using a constraint layout, and you know, interact, you know, use the Java code so you can actually, you know, interact with the app and have it uh, do things.